tense and passionate debate last month over the population white paper. Population issues remain close to everyone's hearts and have a significant impact on our future. Our conversation on population does not end with the debate on the white paper. While the white paper sets out the long-term roadmap to overcome our demographic challenge, our population policies are not static. There are many factors that affect population like fertility rate, the pace of restructuring and global economic conditions. Beyond 2020, things are more uncertain and we will carry out a medium-term review of our population policies and assumptions before then. We will ensure that the benefits of our population policies flow to Singaporeans. Parliament had emphasised the need to maintain a strong Singaporean core by encouraging more Singaporeans to get married and have children. This remains our top priority and is a key and central starting point of our population policies. Last year, we welcomed 33,205 new Singaporean babies and our total fertility rate was 1.29. I'm happy to share that this is a slight improvement from 2011, where there were 30,946 new babies born to Singapore citizens and a TFR of 1.2. With the enhancements announced in January this year, we have a comprehensive marriage and parenthood package to help us fulfill our aspirations to get married and have children. Our measures support Singaporeans in getting married, setting up a home, having children, parenting, as well as achieving better work-life harmony. Marriage and parenthood is a central piece of our population policies, and we welcome further suggestions on how we can improve our measures. Ms. Lee Li Lian, Mr. Jarod Giam, Mr. Gan Tian Po, and Dr. Intan Azura Mokta have made some suggestions on this area. Ms. Lee asked about the need for the co-savings component of the baby bonus child development account. Our schemes seek to help parents defray some of the costs of raising a child while recognizing that the primary responsibility for the care and development of a child rests with the parents. Costs of raising a child go beyond the cost of delivering and childbirth. In fact, many parents have come up to me to say that they plan ahead for the future needs of their child. Many proactively save for their child. We agree with what they're doing. I think they are very responsible parents and they have sensible plans for themselves and for their children. The government would like to encourage, encourage savings by co-saving with them. The baby bonus scheme, therefore, comprises both the baby bonus cash gift and the CDA. The cash gift component helps parents cover some of the costs in the child's early years. Singaporean children born on or after 26 August 2012 will receive the enhanced baby bonus cash gift of $6,000 each for the first and second child and $8,000 each for the third and fourth child. The coal savings component encourages parents to save for the future needs of the child. This is extended to all birth orders. The government will match dollar-for-dollar dollar contributions made by the parents to the CDA up to a cap ranging from $6,000 for the first child to $18,000 depending on the birth, of the child, birth order of the child. The CDA was extended by six years to the age of 12 of the child with effect from 1st January 2013. This allows parents more time to save and utilize support from the government. In response to feedback and requests from parents, we also expanded the use of the CDA in July 12 to cover healthcare items at pharmacies, eye-related products at optical shops, and assistive technology. CDA funds can also be used for the purchase of textbooks and uniforms for preschool, as well as other related childcare costs, such <coughs> as registration fees, local field trips, and assessment fees. Mr. Kiam suggested further enhancement to the childcare leave scheme. 
We recognize that parents will need time away from work to see to their children's needs, especially parents of younger children. This is why we have increased the childcare leave provisions in 2008 from two days to six days per parent per year for parents with children below the age of seven. Parents of infants below the age of two can also take six days of unpaid infant care leave per parent per year. This gives parents of infants below the age of two a total of 24 days of leave per year to look after their young children. As part of the enhancement in the 2013 MNP package, childcare leave provisions were further extended so that parents of primary school going children aged 7 to 12 can also enjoy two days of government paid childcare leave per parent per year. While legislating more childcare leave may provide parents with greater flexibility, employers may find it difficult to manage their operations and manpower needs if their employees are away for too long. Even with the government funding, even with the government funding childcare leave, we are mindful that some companies face practical difficulties should the employees be absent from work often or for an extended period of time. Legislation of leave entitlement, therefore, has to be made judiciously, taking into consideration the needs and concerns of both employers and employees. This is why the childcare leave entitlement is given to both fathers and mothers for better sharing of parental responsibility with each parent who has young children below seven enjoying the maximum leave entitlement of six days of paid childcare leave per year. Both Mr. Gan Tian Po and Dr. Intan have suggested that the government provide additional support for grandparents and family caregivers. Grandparents and other relatives who care for children play an important role in raising them. They make significant contributions to our society in bringing up the next generation and passing on our values and memories to shape the future generations of Singaporeans. Their contributions cannot be underestimated, nor are they quantifiable. We have sought to symbolically recognize the support provided by grandparents by giving the grandparent caregiver relief of $3,000 per year to working mothers. It is never easy to place a value on the care given by one family member to another, whether it is a husband caring for a sickly, for a sickly wife, a mother caring for her child, or a daughter caring for an elderly parent. Recognizing that care given by one family member to another is one that's motivated by a sense of love and family ties, we have not attempted to reward family members monetarily for looking after one of our own. In this light, we hope that parents will do more to recognize the help offered and sacrifices made by grandparents. In total, Madam, we have set aside an annual budget of $2.3 billion for marriage and parenthood measures. We are making improvements to the preschool sector. MOE and MSF will provide further details of these initiatives. In addition, we recognize that employers can and do play an important role in supporting a pro-family environment by putting in place family-friendly work practices. In this regard, we are also enhancing the support given to employers. MOM will provide more details on this. While we continue to support marriage and parenthood, we recognize that there are personal decisions. Social attitudes and family values play an important role in influencing these decisions. The society at large has an important role to play. Employers making available flexible arrangements, bosses encouraging their young employees to leave the office when work is done, grandparents helping to keep an eye on the young children, a friend who organizes dinner parties and introduces new friends to one another. These are ways that can help shape a pro
pro-family environment so that our young adults will put family high up on their priorities and are better able to achieve their family and career goals. We thank members for their suggestions, Mr. Gan Tian Po, on the family COE, for example, and will take them into consideration as we continue to study ways to better support Singaporeans in their marriage and parenthood journey and enhance the pro-family environment in Singapore. Apart from encouraging marriage and parenthood to strengthen our Singaporean core, Singaporeans living overseas are also an integral part of the Singapore family and Singaporean core. We're actively engaging our overseas Singaporeans to help them remain emotionally connected to Singapore and in touch with developments and opportunities back home. We hope that they will return at the end of their work or study stings overseas. Our overseas Singapore unit proactively reaches out to Singaporean overseas. We have conducted an extensive study involving more than 3,000 Singaporeans abroad. We are actively taking steps to address their needs and facilitate their returning from abroad as much as possible. This could involve facilitating contact with various public agencies such as MINDEF for enlistment matters, Contact Singapore for job matching and MOE for placement of returning students. We keep in touch with our Singaporean overseas through a suite of face-to-face -face and online engagement activities. Events such as Singapore Day bring a piece of Singapore to our Singaporeans living overseas. Here we have very energetic Singaporeans waving Singapore flag proudly in Prospect Park, New York, 15,000 kilometers away from home. They are very appreciative of the effort to keep them connected emotionally with Singapore, including having good Singaporean food. We see these as important platforms for us to strengthen the emotional connection between our overseas Singaporeans and Singapore. Our president and ministers also take opportunities to meet Singaporeans whenever they go for overseas visits. This is a slide, a photo of our prime minister holding a tea reception in Melbourne in October 2012 for the Singaporeans there. The young Singaporeans were very appreciative of the opportunity to catch up on the latest development in Singapore and also an opportunity to engage our Prime Minister. Many who have attended these events found that these are precious opportunities to reconnect with Singapore as well as to meet fellow Singaporeans. As Singaporeans join the global talent pool, we will need to compete for our Singaporeans to return. Ultimately, what matters most to Singaporeans abroad is the same as that for Singaporeans here. That is, Singapore to be a place where we belong, that it is a good home for us, and it is a place where we have good opportunities and a fair chance to succeed. For Singapore to be attractive, we must offer good opportunities for our people. While we are putting in all our efforts to sustain a strong Singaporean core by encouraging Singaporeans to get married and have children, this will take time. We are hopeful that we can improve our TFR over time. In the meantime, we have to address the shortfall of births. We do so through a calibrated pace of immigration, granting a select number of citizenships to those who share our values, who can fit into our society, and who have committed their future with Singapore. Associate Professor Fatima Latif asked about the impact of immigration on our fertility rate and dependency ratio. Our immigrants top up our resident population in the younger age groups where we have a shortfall of babies. Our birth rates have been below replacement levels over the past few decades. Immigration helps to alleviate this problem and improve our old age support ratio as we work towards improving our fertility rates. An increasing number of new immigrants are foreign spouses of Singaporeans, and such couples go on to have children that will make up the next generation of Singaporeans. In 2012, around 9,000 marriages involved one citizen and a foreign spouse, either a permanent resident or non-resident. Children born from marriages involving a foreign spouse 
account for about 30% of our Singaporean babies each year. Mr. Ang Wei Neng, Mr. Sito Yiping, and Associate Professor Eugene Tan raised the issue of integration of new citizens. Many of them would have lived in Singapore for a number of years before taking up citizenship. It takes time and effort for our immigrants to understand and adapt to our values and norms. The National Integration Council drives and coordinates integration efforts across different platforms, namely our schools, workplaces, and community to familiarize our newcomers to Singapore's norms, cultures, and values. The Singapore Citizenship Journey was introduced in 2011 to enrich new citizens' understanding of Singaporean norms and values and provide opportunities for greater interaction with their local community. We have received good feedback from participants of these initiatives, but more can be done to improve them. We will review the efforts undertaken thus far to address possible gaps. The NIC will also press on with efforts to foster integration across all segments of our society. Minister of Culture, Community and Youth, who chairs the NIC, will elaborate more on the Council's upcoming plans in his speech. The challenge lies in fostering meaningful integration. The SC Journey and many other integration programs are merely catalysts to the process. Ultimately, Effective and sustainable integration can only be achieved when sincere relationships are forged between new immigrants and Singaporeans. The numerous opportunities in our daily lives to cultivate and nurture these relationships are therefore the most crucial element in the integration process. We therefore seek the support and participation of everyone, both Singaporeans and new immigrants, so that we can maintain the cohesion in our diverse society and safeguard our values and norms. Mr. Ang Wei Neng and Mr. Situ Yiping raised an interesting proposal for Singaporeans to be involved in the decision of granting citizenship. We will consider it seriously. Singaporeans remain at the heart of our nation and are the central consideration in all our policies. A strong Singaporean call is our key objective. A strong Singaporean call is where Singaporeans have a sense of well-being and belonging. Well-being comes from tangibles, like having good and meaningful jobs and a good quality living environment, as well as intangibles, like strong, loving and supportive families, values that connect us and a collective hope for a brighter future. We believe that together, all of us, new citizens, Singaporeans alike, we can build a strong Singaporean core and a brighter future for Singapore.